Okay, friends, let's do this. Let's start fall DIYs. I am so excited, and we're going to start off with this wood round from Dollar Tree. I cut off the jute hanger, and then I stain it with my Dixie Belle Voodoo Gel Stain, which is my absolute favorite. Once I'm done staining it, then I wipe away the excess with a paper towel, and then because y'all know I'm super impatient, I take my blow dryer to it to dry it down the rest of the way. Next, I take three of these color your own pumpkin ornament. I think they're like color your own ornaments from Dollar Tree. They come out with them every single season. They come in a pack of like five or six, I believe. So I pull out three of them. I lay them down in the middle of my sign and then I tape at the top and the bottom. That way I have a nice idea of how big I need my middle to be because I'm going to give that middle section a distress coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. I once again hit that with my blow dryer and then I work on the pumpkins. So for the pumpkins, I am going to use white Waverly chalk paint, pumpkin Waverly chalk paint, and moss waverly chalk paint i'm going to paint the first one white and obviously the others in the other colors now when you're painting there is no rhyme or reason or technique you paint to your heart is happy. I personally love the distressed look, so I leave some of that natural wood showing through, but if you do not like that look, do not be afraid to give it a good coat of paint and even a second coat if you need to. Again, I like the distressed look, so I went in with a little bit of my gel stain and I gave the white one a little bit of dry brushing, and then with the other pumpkins, I just took what was on the end of my brush from the other colors and I just kind of played around and made them look as old and as rustic as I personally liked. Again, personal preference, do your pumpkins the way that you like them. So this was just not enough distressing for me. So I pulled out my mini chip brush and again, I took that gel stain and I just lightly brushed, I don't know uh, why I do that, you guys. I don't know how to explain it, but I just feel like the strokes should be a certain way. <laughs> That's the OCD coming out in me. So I kind of use like the side of the brush, the tip of the brush. Um, I just use my brush and then once my heart and my eyes are happy, then I'm good to go to the next step. Next, I glue them down to that middle white part, and then I made three different, bo or three bows, two of them with buffalo check ribbon, and then one of them with a triple jute bow, and if you guys want to know how to make a finger bow, I will leave that link in the cards in the right hand corner. Next, I go in with an old transfer. This is from last year. That's why I tell you guys, if you see transfers you like, grab them because they're reusable. You can have them for years to come. So I pulled this out of my stash from last year. It says, it says welcome to our patch. And I transferred on the welcome to our patch at the top and then the little pumpkin and the autumn market you pick pumpkins 50 cents at the bottom. Now, originally I, tr I had transferred on my pumpkin with our new color rust. However, I didn't really like it, so I ended up just using my transfer again, going right back over it with my gold, and I absolutely love it, you guys. Look how gorgeous this is. Now, we're gonna make a double-sided sign, so bear with me just a second. I'm gonna show you how to do the hanger once we do the second side. Thank you. 
You guys, I'm aware that you can probably hear my neighbor mowing his lawn. Of course, like right at the time that I need to do this, he's over there mowing his lawn. I'm so, so sorry if it is annoying, but this is literally the only time that I have to do this voiceover. So let's just move along and um, just bear with me. I appreciate all you guys who stick around through my mistakes and my mess ups because guess what? I'm human, you guys. I am nowhere near perfect. So anyway, let's do the second side. I just give it a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. And then once again, this is a transfer from last year. It is kind of like porch sayings, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But anyway, I pulled it out and I just love this saying. I just recently did a mini porch makeover and I will be uploading that on my reels on Instagram and TikTok. So if you guys are not following me over there where you can find daily content from me, I go on my stories. It's a lot more of like my personal life and just more of like me and my regular life and everything I have going on. So anyway, if you guys want to follow me, it's all things crafty too. But I just lay out my wording, I mark it, and then give that space a distress coat of my Moss Waverly chalk paint. And then for the top and the bottom, this is a new transfer. I love it, you guys. It's got all the little different like backgrounds. So I chose the brick for this. I don't know if you guys saw it, but that wood one, oh my goodness, I cannot wait to use that one, especially for like Christmas time. Yes, I'm so excited. Anyway, so I transfer on that brick to the top and the bottom white space with my shimmer copper um, chalk paste and I wanted you guys to know that you can now get the 40% off of everything discount with the designer pass so just text me the word chalk couture to I'll leave the number here on the screen text me and I'll get that information over to you guys yes it's actually me texting you back I might not text back right away but it's definitely me <laughs> so next I transfer on my wording with my white chalk paste so I start with the stay a while at the bottom just so that way I could space the gladger here above that nicely and I dry in between coats and you want to make sure that you're not pressing too hard and you also want to make sure that your paste is stirred up because that's when you have bleeding is when it's not stirred up correctly or if you press too hard or if you pull your transfer up too quickly so just take your time use your squeegee do not squeeze or do not push too hard and then once you pull that up pull it up nice and slow and you get this absolutely gorgeous image now again this was a transfer from I believe two years ago actually a harvest sign so I just transferred on that pumpkin with our new color rust and then last but not least, all I did was take some nautical rope from Dollar Tree. I cut off the end because the end has like tape on it. And then I just glued it all the way around this wood round. And then at the end, I cut it, glued it where the other piece met the piece that I came around with, if that makes sense. <laughs> and then I just glued that together nicely, trying to make that seem as seamless as possible. Now, again, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is rustic decor, in my opinion, so it doesn't bother me when it's not perfect. However, I do my very best to get it as perfect as, perfect as possible, like I said. Now, last but not least, to hang this, all I did was cut another piece and then glue it on either side towards the top. And that was it, you guys. Let me know which side is your favorite. I personally don't know. I think it's this side, but I can never choose as usual. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think. But I love both sides and it's getting me all in my feels for the fall season to arrive. My baby boy is coming. So doing DIYs is just a symbol that having him is literally right around the corner. So anyway, let me know what you guys think of these signs.
Okay, friends, for the last DIY, now I have more DIYs coming Monday, so make sure you're subscribed. Make sure you have that bell rang and set to all. That way you're notified. But anyway, I, I take two of the wooden arrows from Dollar Tree and then one of the reception signs from Dollar Tree. And once again, I paint them with the moss, the pumpkin, and my white Waverly chalk paint and I give it a distress coat as I always do. Now you can always paint these like before you go to bed and then when you wake up they'll be dry and you can continue on with your project. But I am the type of person when I am DIYing, I'm like, all right, let's go the next step. I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> so I tend to use my blow dryer a lot in between coats, but sometimes I will paint and then go inside for the night and come back out the next day. So I did just want to mention that I know not everybody is, you know, a seasoned crafter. So I did just want to give you that little tidbit, but as usual, y'all guessed it, I distressed all of these with my mini chip brush and my gel stain. Next, I went to my computer and you guys, there, there's nothing to this. All I did was just pick three different fonts and then I just typed out the words that I wanted, printed them out, and then cut them down to fit on my signs. Next, I took my graphite paper from Arteza and I uh, traced these on. Now, I deleted the Word document, but if I have time, I will create this document again for you guys. It only took a few minutes. However, I'm a super busy mom, and I unfortunately deleted it by accident. I didn't mean to, but like I said, if I do get time, I will definitely create that for you guys. But I went ahead and I traced all the wording on all of my little directional signs. And then I went in with my white paint pen. I went over the wording on the moss arrow and the pumpkin arrow. And then for the white arrow, I went in with my black paint pen and I went over all of that wording. Now the best paint pens that I have found, and I have been doing this a long time, you guys. So the white, the best paint pen you can find is actually from Hobby Lobby. And then the black, my personal favorite is the Sharpie brand. I get a lot of questions. So again, I wanted to mention that. But then once again, I just distressed over that white wording. I felt it looked a little funny against the distressing. So I wanted to make it all blend in. And then with my black paint pen, I give the white wording shadowing and then with my white paint pen I give the black wording shadowing and all I did was just go to Google and typed in um, bold letter shadow and it, a picture popped up or a bunch of fonts pop, popped up that I was able to look at and kind of copy my shadowing from those fonts on Google. So anyway, moving on, I wanted to give these a little bit of character. So once again, I went in my stash, I pulled out these transfers. These are from a few years ago and it was absolutely perfect. It had the hay bales, it had the corn, and for the pumpkins, I just found a little transfer that had a tiny little pumpkin on it. Now in that big one that I just showed you, there were pumpkins like in a pumpkin patch, but I just didn't have room for that. So I did opt out or opt in for just a pumpkin by itself. Now for the corn maze sign, there was no room on that one either. So I just had this little piece of scrap wood. I stained it and then I transferred on that little corn picture. And then I also pulled out a plunger from Dollar Tree as well as this wooden plaque and gave them both a good coat of my Dixie Belle Voodoo stain. And once that was dry, then I took my mini chip brush and my white Waverly chalk paint and once again dry brushed all the way around each one. Next, I glued down my arrows. Now, there was no 
particular way that I did this. Again, I glued them down till my eyes were happy. And then for the corn maze sign, I kind of uh, glued that down going the opposite direction. I just thought that it looked super cute. And then I reinforced with some hot glue on the back. To glue this down, I used some uh, gel super glue from Dollar Tree and some hot glue. Made sure that that was nice and glued down before I let it go. And then last but not least, you guys, I just embellished this with anything that I had in my stash. I had this floral from last year from Walmart. So I just cut those down to make those look like a corn stalk. So I just cut a few of the picks off and then zip strap them together. And then I just kind of fluff them out and glued them down to the bottom of my sign and glued like one little piece to the back. That way it wouldn't go anywhere. And then I just put some Spanish moss at the bottom with some pumpkins from Dollar Tree. And literally, you guys, that was it. Look how cute this turned out. I absolutely love it. It looks so cute on my front porch and I'm so excited for fall and I'm so excited to bring you guys more DIYs. So let me know down in the comments which project was your favorite. Again, I can never pick a favorite, but I'm always curious to hear your opinions. First DIY, you're gonna take a few different pumpkins that I got from Dollar Tree. This is the thankful and blessed one, the mini pumpkin that is the paint your own pumpkin, and then kind of like that medium sized decorative one. I start by just taking all of the embellishments off of them. Now the leaf was a little tricky to get off the bigger pumpkin, so I did just take my putty knife and kind of slide that under the glue and remove that, and then I removed all the raffia bows and the jute hangers. Next, I had a few different pieces of scrapbook paper to choose from, but I ultimately decided on this bigger black and white buffalo check. So I traced out that pumpkin, cut it out, and then I used my disappearing purple glue stick to glue that down to the surface. Once I laid it down onto my pumpkin, onto the back of the pumpkin, I should say, I made sure to smooth that out really, really nicely before moving on to the next step. Next, I give this middle pumpkin a distressed coat of my pumpkin Waverly chalk paint. And while the paint is still wet, I take a little bit of my gel stain and I just kind of brush some of that stain in the pumpkin to make it look like real wood. For the last pumpkin, I do the exact same thing I did with the orange pumpkin. So I give it a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. And then while that paint is still wet, I go in with that gel stain once again. For the middle pumpkin, I had this transfer from last year. You can see that it is well loved. That's why I keep telling you guys, if you see transfers that you love, grab them. That way you have them t for years to come because they are reusable upwards of, I don't even know, but lots of times as long as you take care of them. So I laid that out on my middle pumpkin. I marked where the wording would be tape that off with my painter's tape. And then at first I was going to give it a distress coat. Y'all know how I do, but some of that orange was still showing through and like mixing with the white. So I did just give it a nice thick coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. Once that was dry and I took the paint off, then I pulled out my burlap. I measured out a piece for that middle piece where the where we just painted it white and then cut that down to size. Once I was satisfied with the sizing of my burlap, then I went in with my transfer and my chalk couture ink. I actually got questions about this in my last video. So we do have ink, which is permanent. And then we also have paste, which is removable. So here, because we're using burlap, it's a fabric. I was really nervous to do this because the burlap is, has all those really, really tiny hairs. Um, but 
it washed right off. It was no big deal. And I did not speed this up because I just wanted to show you guys that I always take my time when I am chalking. It looks like I'm going pretty fast because I speed it up, but I do take my time to not press too hard, get my paste nice and evenly spread. And then before I go like ripping off my transfer, you're going to see here in a minute that I very carefully pull it up to make sure that all of the ink has went through the transfer. And you're going to see that it did not. So I just lay my transfer right back down and then I go a little bit more heavy handed. But at first, especially with black paste, you definitely want to go very light handed. Make sure your paste is stirred. And when you pull it up, make sure that you pull it up nice and slowly. That way you can eliminate bleeding. So once I figured out that it needed more ink, I went in heavy handed, like I said, pulled that up. And although you cannot, although it's a little bit distressed, I personally like the way that that looks. So I let that dry really well and then glued that down to that middle part. And then I further distressed that white little pumpkin with my mini chip brush and that same gel stain. I also had this piece of poplar in my stash, so it was just a, a scrap wood, and I also stained that piece and then set it aside to dry. I took my jute from Dollar Tree, glued it to the back of the middle pumpkin, and then wrapped it around that stem a couple times, and then glued it to the back. And then I also made a simple um, buffalo check bow. If you guys need to learn how to make a bow, I will leave that in the cards in the right hand corner. So I just glued that down to the middle pumpkin on top of the jute. And then for the bigger pumpkin, I did the exact same thing with the jute. And then I made a triple finger jute bow which like I said, that video that I linked in the cards, so that's where you can find the finger bow trick. Then I took that raffia that we originally took off of the bigger pumpkin, glued that down to the jute we wrapped around the stem, and then glued the triple jute bow down to the raffia bow. Hopefully you guys caught that. I know that was really long winded. So moving on, now it's time to glue everything together. So I take the middle pumpkin, I kind of lean it up against the bigger one to make sure that I like the placement, glue that down and do the same thing with the smaller pumpkin. Next, I take the leaf that we took off the bigger pumpkin and I just kind of dry brush some of that gel stain all the way around the leaf to give it some distressing and make it look a little bit old and weathered. Glue that down to the smaller pumpkin. And then last but not least, I glued all of the pumpkins to that uh, scrap wood that we stained. And then to uh, stand this up and make sure that it doesn't go anywhere, all I did was glue three Jenga blocks to the back. Now to finish this off, I realized that some of my scrapbook paper was hanging over the edge and it was driving me nuts. My OCD did not like it, so I just sanded off that excess. Next, I took some lamb's ear that I got from Walmart. That is my favorite place to get florals. And I kind of measured it out for the bottom. Um, now, when you get these from Walmart, you get two picks for the price of one, if that makes sense. So I just kind of pulled them apart and then measured them, cut them down, and then glued them in opposite directions down to the bottom. Now the reason I wrap it with wire is because lamb's ear is has that like hair on it and sometimes the glue doesn't stick very well. So I like to like wrap them together with wire first and then glue that down to the bottom middle. And then last but not least, I made a simple little bow I wrapped some jute around the middle and then glued that down to the bottom. And look how cute this is, you guys. I absolutely love the way that the Hello Pumpkin looks against that burlap and then how all of them sit so nicely together. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think of DIY number one.
Y'all, these were so simple and easy to make. So I took three jars that I got from Dollar Tree and I took the stickers off the bottom. Now these were so annoying. So I took my blow dryer to heat up that sticker so that they could easily come off. And then I took off the tops of the jars, glued the rings down to the middle part. I forget what they're called. And then I spray painted them with my hammered Rust-Oleum spray paint. And I was just showing you guys, I love those spray paint handles. It makes spray painting so, so much easier. So I definitely recommend those. I can throw one in my Amazon shop for you. But next I paint the jars, one of them with my Moss Waverly chalk paint, white Waverly chalk paint. And then the last one, I made a mix of white and pumpkin. Now, I did use the pumpkin in the last project and I I did use it last video, but I'm just feeling like it's just a little too bright for me. So I did just tone that down a little bit and then painted that last pumpkin with that mixture. Last pumpkin. <laughs> I painted the last jar with that mixture. Y'all know me, I hit them with the blow dryer because I'm way too impatient to sit there and watch paint dry. And then I also used my finger sander once they, once they were completely dry to distress them. Now, I, there was there is no like specific way I do this. I just kind of randomly, um, you know, sand spots. And when my eyes are happy, then I stop if you don't like it then you can totally leave that step out however i'm not really too sure how your lights would glow if you don't distress it um you'll see at the end that they're not perfectly covered which i personally like but if you like them to be a solid solid color when the lights are in there except for wherever you distress then I definitely recommend to do at least three to four coats of paint. Once I was done with the sanding distressing, then I used my chip brush and my gel stain and further distress them. That way, like during the daytime, you could still really see that distressing. And then I took these fairy lights that I got from Amazon. I can also link them in my Amazon shop in the description box below. And I just make sure that all of them work first and foremost and then unwrap them stick them in the jars and then glue them to the back of the jar making sure that the screw part of the battery pack of the lights is facing towards you that way if your batteries um, die then you can change them really easily Next, I grab my lids because they were finally dry and I just take a little tiny brush and once again, that gel stain and I just randomly dry brush spots here and there. I really wanted these, um, the lids to really look like dirty and old and weathered. I just love that look for fall. So I really went heavily in the front and then I repeated that step for all of them and I also dry brushed them with my mini chip brush and that same gel stain. I then pulled out those little uh, wood pieces that we hauled last week. I can link that haul in the right hand corner. And I just pick out some of those stems. Now they were a little bit too long. My miter shears would not cut through these because it's like solid, solid wood. Uh, so I pulled out my mini miter saw once again, linked in my Amazon shop, and I just cut those down to uh, the size that I liked and then glued those to the middle of the lids of the jars. Next, I go in with the jute once again and wrap that around the neck of the jars, hot gluing that so it doesn't go anywhere, repeating that step for the orange and the moss color, and then for the white jar, I tied a piece of buffalo check ribbon because we're kind of we're gonna kind of do reverse. So for the orange and moss color, like I said, we wrapped the jute around and then I made two bows with the buffalo check and glued those to the middle. And then for the white one, I wrapped 
um, buffalo check around the neck and then glued a jute bow to the middle. And that was it, you guys. I was going to embellish these and put like different stuff on them, but I was just really digging the plain look of them. Um, I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. Would you have embellished them more or do you like them plain? Um, I also really love them lit up at night. I know some people might not like you know, that streaky paint look, but I personally do. So once again, let me know down in the comments if you guys like them more during the day with embellishments at night, etc. Okay, friends, now this one is so easy. You could do this in your sleep. I take this jar from Dollar Tree. It reminded me of a pumpkin the second I saw it. So I picked up several of these for this season. I have several ideas for these. So for this idea, I take the sticker off the bottom and then take some uh, of this finished moss and put some in the bottom of the jar. I then take another strand, another strand of those lights from Amazon and I just put some of the lights down and then I also use a dowel to kind of move everything around in place because this is a odd shaped jar and I just kind of layer it, the moss, the lights, the moss, the lights. Um, and then once I get to the top, I kind of push that battery pack over the side of the jar. And then I also throw some pine cones in there just to make it look nice and festive and decorative. Next, once again, I wrap some jute around the neck of the jar. I glue the battery pack down and then I take a bigger a piece of those little wood pieces from Dollar Tree and glue that down to the lid. Next, I take these berries that I got last year um, at fall time from Dollar Tree and I just wrap it around the front, twist it in the back, and then kind of pull it towards the front. And then I take a paintbrush on either side of the berries and wrap the berries around so you kind of have like a nice little curly cue. And then I also had this metal pumpkin in my stash from Dollar Tree from last year. So I took the raffia bow off of it, glued that to the middle of the jar. And then I also took the leaves off of um, the pumpkin as well. Now I did have to cut those off with my wire cutters and they were a little bit tricky to glue down to this metal top but with a little bit of patience I got them to glue down just fine and y'all I absolutely love this jar. I keep showing Mark and my friend like look I just love this jar. I don't know what it is about it but I love this thing so much so let me know down in the comments what you guys think. You guys are still around. You guys are the best. So I was just showing the showing you that you can use the smaller crates or the bigger crates. Now I personally like the bigger closed ones, but if the smaller ones are all you can find, that's totally fine. So I lost the footage, but all I did was glue them together, paint them white, and then distress them really nicely. Y'all know how I do. And then I took these one inch square dowels that I had in my stash from making my son these canvases. Um, I had bought a bunch of them and I bought too many. So anyway, what better to do than craft with my dear? <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, I glue, I cut those down to size. We're going to make an, another stand if you guys have not figured that out. Um, I recently made a bumblebee stand back in, you know, for summer decor. So I can link that in the cards as well. And if I forget, you guys, look, I have so much going on. If I forget, just let me know in the comments and I'll do it. But anyway... I cut them down to size with my saw. It's linked in my Amazon shop in the description box. I glue those down to each corner with my wood glue and some hot glue and then paint them with white and distress it so that it matches. Next, I pull out two of these 
um, metal pieces from Dollar Tree in the copper color and I also kind of lean that up to my stand and bend it where I would like my awning to be. Now this is personal preference. If you like it a little bit longer to the front or whatever the case may be, you can bend your pieces as short or whatever as you like, if that makes sense. So um, I did mine about three or four curves down and I did that to two pieces, like I said, and then lined them up to fit the awning and then glued it down with some hot glue. Now I'm going to tell you guys, definitely use some super glue. You're going to see here in a little bit that I do have clamps on them because I did end up having to super glue it. So don't make the same mistake I did um, because I have a mess of hot glue that looks like crap, but we covered it. So don't even worry about it. So as you could see there that I drilled holes in the back of our dowels and then I also attached our roof piece with some wood screws that I also got from Amazon. And then now we're going to work on all the little embellishments. So I take this um, fabric. Yeah, it's fabric, Melissa. <laughs> Pregnancy brain is a real thing, you guys. Like, whoa, it's serious around here. But anyway, I take this fabric that I actually got last year, once again, from Dollar Tree. It is this cute little orange and white buffalo check and I cut a piece off and then cut triangles, cut another piece of jute and then I glue my triangles to the jute. Now the easiest possible way I found to do this was to glue the edge of your little triangle and then lay your jute on top of that. And then my squeegee, y'all, I love my squeegee from my chalk couture for um, drying hot glue and not burning your fingers. It's absolutely amazing. So dual purpose there. And then obviously I glued that to the top inside of my little awning or whatever you want to call this pumpkin stand. Now I wanted to make little decorations. So I took out these little chalkboards from Dollar Tree and I also took out my um, tiered tray stencil from Chalk Couture. I can leave all the um, Chalk Couture products that are in my shop that I can link. I will link for you guys all in one link. You can add and subtract from that um, link as you like. It'll just um, take you to a cart and then you can, you know, like I said, add or, add or subtract. So I take the Farm Fresh and I transfer that on with my white chalk paste onto one of the little mini chalkboards and then for the second one I took the pumpkins and transferred that on. I also wanted to mention you guys can now text me at 302-204-0881 the word chalk couture if you guys want more info on the 40% discount on all the items that you guys can now get for kind of like a Cricut access so anyway, just text me. I'll give you guys the info. And then once I was done with the little signs, then I went to the front of this, pulled out this pumpkin patch transfer. This is a really old transfer, I believe. I don't know. Don't quote me, but I know it's at least a couple years old. Um, but again, I have a lot in my stash, so I love to mix and match them. That's the beauty of DIY and using your favorite medium is you can do it how you like and with Chalk Couture, they're reusable so I ha I'll have them like forever. So anyway, <laughs> once I was done with the wording, then I transferred on those pumpkins and the stems which also came from the exact same transfer. Um, it was a huge one and E size is 24 by 18. So it had a bunch of fall like embell embellishments for the truck. But anyway, now I'm just rambling. <laughs> so once I was done my transfers, then obviously you saw I cut more pieces of square dowels because it was kind of like caving in in the middle, which I had a feeling was going to happen. But um, anyway, it's no big deal because I added it. So I cut two pieces to go on the e on the other sides of the crates on the inside. Cut those down painted them white, distressed them, and then glued those down 
to give that more stability on the inside. And then, like I said, the roof had a little bit of glue that I was not liking. I tried to cut it off, but then the roof was like trying to come apart. And oh my goodness, you guys, it was a mess. So plan B was to just cover it up with something. And I actually love this way more. So it was like a happy mistake. So don't ever get on yourself for mistakes because it might turn out way better in the end anyway. So I had this in my stash from last year and it came from the hanging, um, the hanging shelves from Dollar Tree that I made another shelf out of and I kept the um, jute in my stash. So I just glued that down to all of the edges and wherever the two metal pieces met. And then I just embellished the inside, you guys. I absolutely love this little stand. Let me know down in the comments which project was your favorite. I don't know, you guys. I really love this stand. But that pumpkin I was talking about, I just really love it too. So I don't know. I can never pick a favorite. Y'all let me know. I'm so excited for fall. And I know you guys are too. Okay, friends, if you guys are ready for spooky season and Halloween DIYs, leave me a ghost down in the comments below. If you can't find a ghost, just say ghost. That's totally fine. I get the drift. So I start off... For this project, with this piece of foam board that I had in my stash, y'all, I have had this piece of foam board since my back in the kitchen days. I used to stage with this piece of foam board. All I did was wrap it with a piece of contact paper, and it was just in my scraps, so I figured why not use it. I started off by just marking the top and the bottom of how big I want my coffin. If you have not figured that out yet, this is what we're going to make. So I did eight inches at the top, eight inches at the bottom. Now, I wasn't really too sure how to make a perfect, a perfect, <laughs> a perfect coffin shape. So all I did was go to Google, type in coffin, and I, I got a general idea, and then I just marked it out as best as I could. Now, this is 20 by 20, I believe. Um, don't quote me on that, but I can leave the measurements down in the description box below. But I just went in with my ruler and a pencil, and I had a uh, picture on Google popped up, like I said, and I just drew out the shape as best as possible. Once I was done with the first shape, then I realized that the bottom is way more narrow than the top is. So if your top is eight inches, then your bottom is going to be about six inches. And then the, also the bottom part of a coffin is a lot more slender than the top part is. So I did just make those adjustments and then I used my hot knife to go ahead and cut that out. Now, originally, I was going to make this about an inch and a half wide, and I don't know what told me that that was too big, so I cut it down to an inch, but please, you guys, if you recreate this project, which I hope you will because it really wasn't hard to do at all, then make sure that your shelves are a little bit bigger. I regret not making this a little bit wider because when I went to go make all the decor for the inside of it, I did have to limit myself to certain things just because some things that I wanted to use would not fit on my little shelves. So just keep that in mind. Like I said, if you recreate this and tag me on Instagram so I can see it because I love seeing your guys' projects. So anyway, once I was done with the general shape, then I took that same scrap that I cut it out from and I just lean it up to the top part, cut that piece out, and then I just repeated that step all the way around my coffin, making sure to glue them after I cut them down. That way I know the next piece will fit perfectly. I get many questions about my hot knife. Now, I personally got this from Walmart, but I can leave a hot knife linked in my Amazon store that is either the exact same one that I have 
or one that is very comparable if I did not do that already. And you guys can always find my Amazon and all of my links linked down in the description box below. If you guys click the title of this video, a box will appear and that is the description box. I know not a lot of people know how to get to it. So I figured that I would just mention that really quick. And as the old saying goes, measure twice, cut once. That way you don't have to continue to cut pieces. But once I was finished with the entire outside, then I just did the exact same thing for the shelves on the inside. Now, you can put the shelves wherever you like them. You can have little tiny shelves. You can make them a bit wider. It's totally up to you. I don't know where that footage went but all I did was just hold it up to where I wanted my shelves cut that down and then glued those down now to secure this make sure that this is nice and um, glued together and not going anywhere all I did was take my hot glue gun and just run some hot glue along all of the seams now if I did this over again and I might do another one because here you're going to see that I dry brushed, well not dry brushed, I gave this entire thing a distressed coat of my ink Waverly chalk paint and I actually like loved that wood grain in the background. I wish that I had painted my outer pieces first and then attached them just because I really really liked that wood grain and I'm kind of sad that I covered it. Let me know down in the comments. Do you guys like the distressed black look on this coffin better or do you think you like that wood grain in the background? I, I'm curious to know. But anyway, of course we need lights for this thing. So I took my Amazon lights. Um, they're little fairy lights. They came in a pack of 24 and I believe I got them for like a dollar a piece. Don't quote me on that, but I will also leave those linked in my Amazon shop. And I needed two strands for this. So I started off with that little embossing tool. I poked holes in every single corner of the shelves, top and bottom. That way we could string lights at the top and the bottom, obviously. And for the bottom shelves, I did kind of like swirlies. That way we had more lights at the bottom. And then at the top, I only did like one strand, if that makes sense. So if that makes no sense you can see what I'm doing here um, but you just want to weave your lights in and out um, and then you're going to glue the battery pack to the back which I did that first um, I poked my holes I stuck my lights through the back and then through the other side that way we could glue down the battery pack I knew that wasn't going anywhere and then I could freely work with the end of the lights once I was done with one of the lights, then I just glued down the edges and then I used, <laughs> then I used another pack of the, or, you know, strand of the lights and I did the exact same thing for the next three shelves. So what it covered was um, the bottom, the top, and then another shelf and then the next strand covered the bottom, the shelf, and then the top, if that makes sense. <laughs> I know that was a tongue twister, but anyway, moving on. To cover these lights up, all I took was some um, floral moss and some reindeer moss. I just felt that they needed to be covered, and I could have sworn, you guys, that when I was at Dollar Tree, I picked up some of those fake cobwebs, and I literally could not, <laughs> I could not find them anywhere, so I don't know what happened, but anyway, we had to cut, we had to cover up those lights one way or another, so I figured that these two would be the perfect combination, and there was no rhyme or reason or technique. I just laid down some hot glue and then went in with my moss wherever I saw fit. So this is the part where you get to be creative. You can use as little or as much as you would like. You can put 
different decorations in here. It's totally up to you, but I'm going to show you guys how I decorated mine. So I put a little skeleton in there from Dollar Tree. He is motion activated, so when you walk by him, his little eyes go on and he makes like a spooky sound. So I glued him down and then I also took these white skulls from Dollar Tree and a skewer and I stuck four of those skulls down onto the skewer um, and I pointed them in different directions like so the bottom one went one way and then the next the other you could see what I did here. So to make these stand out a little bit more, all I did was take a little paintbrush and my ink Waverly chalk paint and just kind of went in the eye sockets and the nose and the mouth to um, kind of highlight those features. And then I also took a little um, wooden circle and glued that to the bottom. That way this could stand up really easily. And then just to finish him off, all I did was take that same moss and just randomly glued some in between the skulls. And then I also took one of these little cupcake picks. They're so cute. They're little wooden bats. They're actually pretty good quality. I cut them off of the like toothpick part and then I just glued them on my little arrangement and that was it for this one you guys so quick and easy I absolutely love the way that it turned out it's so funny because I never used to make Halloween decor and it's because of you guys that I get super excited now I absolutely love making Halloween decor now For the next little decoration, I took one of these wooden plaques that I got from Dollar Tree and I lost the footage of me painting the one white and black. So there's two different ones. We're going to start off with the black one. I gave it a distressed coat of my ink Waverly chalk paint and then I took that October 31st transfer um, that I had in my chalk couture stash from last year and transferred that on with my white chalk paste. I then took this new transfer, thanks for dropping in with the little spider and the webs, and I started by transferring on the spider kind of in between or in the middle of that October 31st, and then right at the top around the top of that circle, then I transferred on the spider webs, and look how cool this is. I absolutely love it, but we're going to take this a step further. Once that was dry, then I went in with my glow-in-the-dark chalk paste. Yes, you heard that right. Y'all, this chalk paste is so stinking cool. I'll leave y'all the link in the pinned comment and in the description box. Um, but anyway, it's so cool. So once that was dry, I went in with the exact same transfer. I didn't wash it or anything, um, but I went in with my glow-in-the-dark paste and just went over that. Last but not least, I went in with my mini chip brush and my white Waverly chalk paint and I just dry brushed all the way around the edges and look how cool this one is. I cannot wait to hear which decoration was your favorite down in the comments and here you can see how cool that glow in the dark paste is. For the white one, I could not wait to use these rub-on transfers. I recently just hauled these. If you guys did not see that haul, I will leave that linked in the cards in the right-hand corner for you. But I just r randomly picked like the little images in the rub-on transfer that I liked personally and I felt went together. So I picked out the little spider with the spider with the, yeah the spider web. <laughs> The spider web, good lord help us, um, the spider web and like the moon and the ghost with the house. Now y'all, I messed up, I kind of layered these instead of doing one piece at a time and then lifting up the plastic, I thought I was going to be slick and quick. <laughs> I did not even mean to rhyme that. I thought I was going to be slick and quick and just kind of lay them all down and transfer them on. However, I don't recommend you do that because some of them did end up transferring on the plastic. 
So just keep that in mind. So once I was satisfied and I liked the image, then I went in once again with my mini chip brush and my ink Waverly chalk paint and dry brushed all the way around this one. Once that paint was dry, I did the exact same thing with my glow in the dark paste. And literally, you guys, that was it to get such a high-end looking piece. I would pick this up out of a store to, you know, decorate with. So let me know what you guys think. And I would just encourage you guys, if you're scared to DIY, pick out a small, simple project like this one. Start off small and work your way up. Because if I can do it, I know you can do it as well. Moving on to the next little decor piece. Now, this is where imagination comes in. So I saw that these were little teeny gift boxes, and I knew that they would be perfect for like a tiered tray. So I ended up picking them up the other week, not even knowing that I was going to be doing this project. So when I found them in my stash, I knew that they would be perfect for a little decor piece. So I just assembled the box. Now this thing was a little tricky, but I just kind of folded over where I knew all the creases were and then you want to start at the top and kind of join those pieces at the top and the bottom and then you'll wrap that top piece around those join pieces at the top and the bottom and then you're just going to kind of like push it all together and then attach it. Once the box is together then I took this piece of wallpaper that I believe it's like peel and stick wallpaper from Dollar Tree. Now it is very thick and that's why I chose it because these gift boxes are kind of cheap and flimsy. So I wanted to sturdy it up a little bit and I knew that if I use this paper that it would probably make it a lot better and it definitely definitely did. So all I did was just cut out a kind of like a square um, from the wallpaper and then I took the backing off and laid that down to the front of my little coffin. Next I just went around and kind of cut little pieces. Now this is kind of hard to explain. That is why I left the entire clip in here so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing because I can definitely show you better than I can tell you. Once my box was completely wrapped, then I went in once again, surprise, surprise, with my mini chip brush, my ink Waverly chalk paint, and I just dry brushed all the way around my little mini coffin, definitely leaving more of that wood grain shine through this time. Next, I went in with my rest my bones, or rest your bones, I should say, little mini transfer that I got last year. This is why I always tell you guys to grab transfers when you see that you like them because they do retire, but they are reusable so you can have them for years to come. So I transfer on the rest your bones with white, dry that once that was done. I went in with my glow in the dark paste, and now comes the fun part to decorate. So I pulled these spiders from Dollar Tree. I glued one to the top of my little coffin and then I took some of that moss and just randomly glued some around to make it look like it had been growing or it had been there for a while and you know spooky like nobody had come and cut it in a long time. So I just randomly did that. You guys can um, again, be creative, do this to your liking. If you have a better idea, if your placement is better, then you go for it. It does not have to look exactly the same as mine. Last but not least, I took another one of those little um, bats from the cupcake picks and I glued that down to the bottom and I took some of my glow in the dark paste and I went on my little spider and on my little bat just to give those some dimension and that way they could glow as well in the dark. And look how cool that is, you guys. Like, are you kidding me? 
Next, I had this little tiny jar that I got at a yard sale. And once again, I took this transfer that I got last year at Halloween and I transferred on that caution sign with my yellow chalk paste. I pulled that back, not pulling the entire transfer off of my jar because y'all know, probably, you probably guessed it, that I wanted to dry it and put some of my glow in the dark paste on there. Now, I should have dried this better. I was working on glass and I was working quickly. So the second layer did peel up a little bit, but I kind of felt that it just added to the spookiness of it. So it did not bother me, but if that type of thing bothers you, then definitely make sure that your paste is a lot more dry before you go in with your glow in the dark layer next all I did was take a little bit of water and like the tiniest tiniest bit of this Arteza acrylic green paint and made some green water and then cut up some of the limbs from one of the skeletons from Dollar Tree stuck that in there and then glued the cork in so that if it fell the water wouldn't go anywhere and look at how cool that is you guys i love it so much okay friends for the last little diy if you guys are still around leave me a little spooky emoji and just say hey i'm still here with you i appreciate you guys so much um but anyway i take one of the cats and i paint that with my silver acrylic paint next i take this little broom from dollar tree and it was way too tall to fit in my shelves, so I just measured how big or smaller that I needed it, I should say, and I cut that down, and then I also cut off that little part that was holding it together. I did not like the way that it looked, so I just wrapped a little bit of jute around so that it would not unravel, and then I made a simple uh, buffalo check bow, and I also glued that down to my broom. Next, I dry brushed my little kitty with my Ink Waverly chalk paint, and to finish the kitty off, all I did was take some gel stain, and I just kind of made some rust spots. Now, to make cobwebs on my project, all I did was take two scrap stir sticks. I put a little bit of hot glue on one of the ends of my stir stick and then I just kind of like uh, mushed it together pulled it apart and when I pull it apart I just layer it on my project in different directions if that makes sense if that makes no sense you can see what I, what I just did um, and it gives the perfect cobwebs. Now to finish this off, all I did was take my glow in the dark chalk paste and I just randomly dry brushed some of that on some of the little details like the skulls, um, eyes and stuff like that. That way in the dark it glows and you guys, I am loving this project so much. When I first start my projects, I'm not really exactly sure like how they're going to turn out, what exactly they're going to look like. I just kind of work as I go. I take my time. I'm passionate about it. I love it. And I just appreciate that you guys love it just as much as I do. Okay, friends, I just want to put out a little disclaimer. We are under the weather over here, so I know my voice sounds a little funky. If I have a little cough, I'm sorry. I'm human. I'm not sorry. <laughs> so moving on to the next project, we are going to start off with this gorgeous beaded pumpkin. Now, I wasn't really too sure how I was going to do this, but I knew that I wanted to start off with these three rings from Dollar Tree, and I just start off by bending at the seam where they had welded them together. I bend them down kind of in like an oval shape and then once I have them in the shape that I like, then I go ahead and bend and break them apart. Now I tried to solder these together, but I think because this is, um, or these little rings have like that coating on it, it did not want to stick to it. I don't know you guys, my husband said he'll show me how to solder, so maybe next time. So what I did was just take a little bit of um, floral wire and attach them at the bottom. 
Next, I went ahead and put my beads on both sides of the pumpkin. And then once I got into the middle, I found that the 20 millimeter beads that I got off Amazon, I will link them in my Amazon store in the description box, but I found that the beads did not want to um, push down towards the bottom unless I pulled them up and it actually worked out perfectly because that was the perfect shape that I needed anyway. So once I bent them up and put the rest of the beads on either side of the wire, now to hold the beads on before we attach them together, I just took those little clips from Dollar Tree on the end, making sure that the beads didn't go anywhere. And then to join them together, you're gonna see here, it's a little bit hard to explain but I made sure that the wire was covered on one side and then some of the wire was kind of hanging out on the other side. And then I hot glued the first and the second bead on either side together. That way they wouldn't move. And then I also glued in the middle. I like joined both of the beads with some hot glue, if that makes sense. I know I can't explain very well, but you guys can see what I'm doing here. I repeated that for the, the bottom and the middle layer. And then for the top one, I left those kind of apart. I wanted that arch on either side. So I just glued the top beads to the second layer's beads, if that makes sense. Next, I go in with a piece of or actually not a piece of, a zip strap to kind of zip strap all of the layers together. And then I covered that with some jute and some hot glue. And then to cover the bottom wires, all I did was take this uh, macrame cord that I got from Dollar Tree. I tied it on one end and then I quickly realized that it was really going to be hard to kind of weave that in there by hand. So what I did was take one of my huge sewing needles. I strung the nautical rope through the sewing needle. I put a little bit of painter's tape on the end so that way I could get it through the needle and the painter's tape acted as like a barrier so um, I didn't have to tie it or I didn't have to do anything um, it stayed right on my needle because of that painters tape so once I was done kind of sutton I would say that I weaved this so I weaved the three pieces on the left side then I wrapped down the middle and then once I got where the wires separated again on the right hand side then I went ahead and weaved that once again then once I got all the way to the end I just secured that down with some hot glue to make sure that that uh, macrame cord I know I said nautical rope that macrame cord was not going to go anywhere Next, I took this little piece of wood from Dollar Tree. I got them in a big pack in a haul a few weeks back and just glued that down to the top of my pumpkin. And then for the tag, I took this galvanized um, copper tag from Dollar Tree. And you guys, these little tags and all these little um, copper and, you know, galvanized pieces have these plastic pieces on them. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed that, but they're like shrink wrapped on there. And if you don't get real close, you can't see it, but I personally can see it. It drives me nuts. So I removed that. And then I took my tiered tray essentials add-ons from Chalk Couture. You can find all the Chalk Couture information down in the description box below. If you guys want to learn how to get 40% off um, the same exact discount that I get on every single item, go ahead and text my number at 302-204-0881 and text me the word chalk. I'll send that info over to you guys. But anyway, um, there all these little pieces are so cute. You can mix and match for the tear tray. So I chose the pumpkin kisses and harvest wishes with the little pumpkin in the wagon. So obviously I just transferred on those little pieces drying in between coats because the wording is one transfer, the pumpkins, and then the wagon are a totally different one. To finish this off, all I did was made three different bows. I will link my bow tutorial in the right hand corner for you guys and I glued all of those three together at the top and you guys 
you guys. Oh my god, I love this beaded pumpkin so much. I love the tag on it. The bows are awesome. I don't know, you guys. Let me know down in the comments below what you guys think of DIY number one. Do you like Big Lots version better or mine? DIY number two, we are going to make this wooden pumpkin. Now, mine is going to be faux wood. The one from Big Lots, I bought do not believe was real wood either. I believe it was like MDF board. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. However, I knew that I could make it much cheaper and you guys are going to be blown away when you see how realistic this looks. So I start off by just free handing a random pumpkin shape. Now I am not the best at drawing you guys, but it's kind of hard to like print out a shape this size quickly. So I just eyeballed it. It does not have to be perfect because with all the decorations and everything we're going to do, you're not going to look at the shape anyway. So I cut that out with my hot knife linked in my Amazon shop in the description box as well. And then once I had that cut off or cut out, <laughs> once I had it cut out, then I just kind of rough it up. I use my nails to make little knots. I poke it. I scratch it because real wood is not perfect. Next, I take a plate that I had from Dollar Tree in my stash. I love using these for this. And I just pour out some clear Waverly wax as well as some antique Waverly wax. I also take a bath sponge from Dollar Tree, cut it in four, and then I dip it in my antique wax and my clear wax. I make some really dark streaks at first. Let that completely dry. Then I go in again the same way, but I put a little bit more on my uh, sponge and I just kind of wipe that. Now, I'm not the best at explaining this, you guys. I totally got this technique from the Peppermint Cactus. I will link one of her tutorials down in the description box below because, you guys, the way she explains it and does it way better than me, way easier to understand than me, and I love to give credit where credit is due. So definitely go check her out. Let her know that I sent you. And this is the part where you can get creative with your wood if you like gray wood go ahead and use a gray um, you don't even have to use antique wax you can go in with the clear wax and you know any type of chalk paint um, the clear wax is what's going to make it hold on top of that foam board without making it curl and look weird if you guys know what I mean if you've ever painted on foam board you know what I mean but the wax is what's going to allow this to look the way that it does. So I strongly recommend the Waverly Clear Wax. And then once that was completely dry, I was satisfied with the way that it looked. Then I went in with my faux wood chalk couture transfer. Um, I believe four different backgrounds come in one. So there's a brick wall, there's wood, there is wording, and I can't remember the other one, but four come in one transfer. I decided to use the wood, uh, obviously, um, to make this look more realistic. So I did the first half and then I washed it. And then I went ahead and did the top half just so that way I knew that my chalk paste would go through really nicely and I would get that really nice effect. Next, I take this thankful wording from Dollar Tree. I take the tabs off of it and then I take a sponge brush and just dab some white Waverly chalk paint all the way over my wording after I pull that plastic off of it like the tag. Once the white paint was dry, then I went in with my mini chip brush and my gel stain and I just dry brushed all the way around the wording to make it have a little bit of dimension and stand out off of the sign.
I then just grabbed some picks from Dollar Tree that I actually had in my stash from last year. Now, if you guys have been around, you know that I'm not the biggest fan of Dollar Tree florals. Since the 25 cent increase, they have really stepped up their game. However, I still would rather spend just a little more at Walmart and get a much higher quality floral. However, these I was actually super impressed with. So I just pulled out what I thought looked right together. I cut them down to the pick and then I attach them on either side making sure that it's even. So if there's like four wheat on one side then I made sure to have four wheat on the other. I'm just super matchy matchy like that and then once I attach them in the middle with some floral wire then I glue that down to the middle. Next, I had this little pumpkin pick. I glued that down in between the greener, or the florals, I should say. And I felt that because I was going to glue some flowers next to the pumpkin, that it was just a little bit too white. So I did just dry brush some of my Moss Waverly chalk paint on that little white pumpkin. Once I was done with that, then I glued down the flowers on either side. Now, I can't really decide. Do you guys like what I did with these little flowers? Or would you have left them out or did something different? Let me know down in the comments below. I'm always curious to hear your thoughts. Now when you stood this up, you could still kind of see the um, wire behind the little pumpkin and the flowers. So I did just cut some more, um, you know, greenery and floral from a different pick and glued that down to the top middle of the floral arrangement. I then glued down my wording and two bows. And then I still felt it was missing just a little touch. So I just cut a little piece off of the thinnest little piece of wood that I could find and glued that down to the middle of my pumpkin. And that was it, you guys. Look how amazing this turned out. I cannot believe that this is actually foam board. To me, it looks like real wood. I don't know about you guys, but... I would have never guessed that this was foam board. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think, and don't forget to check out the peppermint cactus. Moving on to DIY number three, I start off with three packs of large stir sticks that I got from Home Depot. I lay them out and because I want my fence, um, I did not want the stir sticks to be right up against each other. I did want it to look realistic in the sense that the fence pieces had a little teeny gap in between. So I just laid them down on my Cricut mat and used those little markers to do so. Once I had them all laid out how I wanted, then I took a small stir stick and I took some hot glue and some wood glue and glued that down to the back of my fence. Now just be mindful for the numbers. Um, if you guys mind having the numbers in the front like I do, then make sure your numbers are in the back. And then I flipped it over and took a piece of poplar that I got from Home Depot as well for like two something. I'm not sure exactly. But I just cut that down to size and glued that to the top. I also laid down the transfer that I knew I was going to use so that I could cut the pieces from Dollar Tree for the wooden box at the bottom. And all I did was just lay them down and measure them out, cut them down to size with my saw. And then once I was done with that, then I just sanded down all of the edges. Now to ensure that this is going to stay together really nicely, you don't have to do this. You can skip this step. However, it's going to go together much easier and much nicer and it's probably going to hold a lot longer if you take the extra step to cut down some square dowel rods to glue on either side of the little pieces. So that way you have a nice, a, a much thicker piece 
to glue down to the front and the bottom side, if that makes sense. To attach the pieces, I used, I used some wood glue from Dollar Tree and some Gorilla Hot Glue. Next, I measured out the bottom piece. So once I had the side pieces glued down, then the bottom piece I just put down on my table, took the top piece and just measured it out, cut that down, and then once again, I cut down some dowel rods for the bottom pieces to ensure that it would glue together nicely, and then glued that down with some hot glue and some wood glue as well. Next, I take it outside and spray paint it with my hammered spray paint. I then take my fence piece and give it a distressed coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. And then once that was dry, then I went in, surprise, surprise, with my mini chip brush and my gel stain to dry brush all the way around my fence piece. As always, I tell you guys, if you do not like dry brushing, leave it out. If you do not like white, you can paint it a different color. It is totally up to you. I am just giving you the inspiration and you can do the project to suit your needs, to your liking, as you wish. I then take my pick your own pumpkins transfer. Now this is a few years old. That's why I always tell you guys to grab the transfers you like because you can have them for years to come. They are reusable. You can get ink, you can make shirts. They are, um, you can have, the paste is, like I said, removable. So with chalk boards, you can erase it and you know put a different image for each holiday. So, so many different options but obviously I transferred on the wording with my black and then for the pumpkin I used a combination of gold and our new color rust I believe to join them together I just wet my finger and kind of did a swirling motion and then pulled up my transfer once my box was dry then I went in with some elephant waverly chalk paint and my natural sponge that I got from Walmart and I just dabbed that elephant paint around all of the sides of my box. Once the elephant was dry, then I went in light-handedly with my white Waverly chalk paint doing the same exact technique again just going a little lighter handed and this is going to give the effect of galvanized metal. To finish the box technique galvanized metal look off <laughs> as a tongue twister, I went in with my mini chip brush, once again my gel stain, and just kind of randomly brushed some of that gel stain on and then dabbed it down with my finger to make it look more realistic. I then continued to transfer on the rest of that wording to the front of my box once again with my black paste and my gold paste and then I pulled up my transfer to reveal that gorgeous little image. Last but not least, I glued my box down to the bottom of our fence piece with once again hot glue and wood glue and then I just decorated the middle and you guys, this planner box. I am sorry, but I'm absolutely in love with it. I love the way that the box turned out and the fence piece. I don't know, you guys. Let me know down in the comments below. Would you have picked up the one from Big Lots or do you like this one better?
Now, I started this on camera and finished it on live. So if you guys did not see that live, I will link that in the right hand corner. But all I did was take out my transfer. This is actually the August Club Couture transfer. So if you sign up for the 40% discount, this is the Club Couture transfer that you will get. And I just kind of mark that off and tape it down. Then I use my white Waverly chalk paint to give it a distress coat in the middle. Once that middle part was dry, then I used my painter's tape, taped it off once again, and painted the top and bottom with my Moss Waverly chalk paint. I set that aside to dry, and then I created this gorgeous wreath with my last Dollar Tree grapevine wreath. I don't know why they don't carry the grapevine wreaths anymore, but I have not seen any. And then I also got this floral from Michaels. I was itching so bad to use it. So I just cut up all the picks and then I made a wreath with that gorgeous floral as well as the little pine cones. And then to finish it off, I did take some of that wheat from the Amazon haul that I did a couple months back. And I put those little uh, wheat pieces all around to my liking. I then um, took my transfer and transferred on that wording to my sign. And then once I was satisfied with the transfer, I then glued down my wreath to the sign and then all I did was make a simple bow and glue that down to the top, you guys. To finish this sign, I took my sawtooth hanger that I get in a huge pack from Amazon, once again, linked in my Amazon store in the description box below. And because this wreath is not too heavy, I was not worried about screwing the sawtooth hanger down. So all I did was just attach it to the back with some hot glue, putting a few dabs down, putting the sawtooth hanger down, and then putting some glue over the sides where the screws would have went. That was it, you guys. Now, these are not the traditional colors that I would personally use. However, I love the colors, and I knew that I wanted to make something with it. I also had this ribbon, which worked out completely perfectly. So let me know down in the comments, do you guys like this color scheme for fall, or do you do a different color scheme? Let's take a trip down memory lane and look at my inspiration for today's DIY. Now this is the original little apothecary cabinet that I had made a few years back now. I can't believe it's been a few years. And ever since then, everybody has loved this DIY so much that I have made many different variations of it. So I really wanted to do a Halloween one. Now this did not start out as this shape. This was going to be something totally different. If you guys want to see my original idea, let me know down in the comments. But it ended up being what it is. So let's start off with the boxes. I get these crates from Dollar Tree and 10 in all. I do three on one side, three on the other side, and then two sets of two in the middle. So again, all together, you're going to have 10 crates and you're going to have two sets of three two sets of two, and then you're gonna glue them together as you see here. I love the little um, chip clips from Dollar Tree um, to hold your stuff together while the wood glue is drying because I glued them together with some wood glue. And then once the glue was dry, I flipped it over and took all the stickers off of the bottom of the boxes. And then I stained the entire thing front and back with my Dixie Belle Black Magic Voodoo Stain. Now, the easiest way that I found to do this, because I'm not going to lie, you guys, this does take time, patience, and um, you, got, you get like a rhythm down uh, of the easiest way and the quickest way to cover these without like spray painting it, but I didn't want it to be a solid color. I loved that the wood grain shined through this Dixie Belle stain. So I just squirted some, <laughs> I just put some of the stain in the bottom of the tray, crate, whatever you wanna call it. And then I painted the bottom and the sides. Once I had that completely covered, then I put some more on my brush or in the box itself and did the sides. So I just wanted to mention that that was the quickest and easiest way that I found. Once that was completely dry, I took this um, 
removable wallpaper from Dollar Tree in the wood grain color and I just measure out the sides of the boxes or the top and the bottom, whatever you wanna call it, and then I cut that down to size with my paper trimmer. Now, once again, to get the most out of this wallpaper, um, I cut it into strips and then I cut the pieces down to size. And all in all, you need 20 of the pieces to cover the top and the bottom. Once I had all my pieces cut, then I glue that down with some hot glue, leaving the backing on this removable wallpaper. That's going to ensure that you have a nice, sturdy, um, you know, base to put your little decor in, and it's also going to cover up those holes so that you don't see the so that you don't see them as well. Next, I take a piece of poplar, um, I measure that out and then cut down those pieces to size for the front of our boxes. And when I get to the top, I just measure out each box. Okay friends, so the audio probably will not be very good, um, but I did not wanna forget to mention this in this video. So I wanted to just make a little clip really fast talking about my saw, I literally get so many questions about this every single video so i wanted to stop for a second and tell you guys this is linked in my amazon shop in the description box below if you click the title of this video a box will appear you will see all of the links are now in one place and then you will see a link that is my link tree every single link that you need for me will be there uh this is my dewalt um portable circular mini saw i forget what it's called <laughs> my husband bought it for me but it is a little mini saw um you use it with one hand now some people might need to hold it and then you push this button down pull your trigger However, I am very used to using it one-handed so that I can hold my wood. My husband taught me how to use it with one hand. So, um, DeWalt came out with their one-handed tools um, a little bit ago, and this is a part of that line. We are a big fan of DeWalt in this house because it's really good quality, even though it is a little bit pricey. Um, I believe in paying a little bit more to get good quality stuff. So anyway, this is linked in my Amazon shop. Um, I'm sure you actually, I know you can get it at any local hardware store, Lowe's, uh, Home Depot, um, really any hardware store should carry a line of DeWalt. So hope this helps. Next, I cut these down to size and then sand off any excess splinters from when I cut it. Next, I paint all of my front pieces with my white Waverly chalk paint. Now, I get a lot of questions about if I like Dixie Belle or Waverly better. Honestly, honestly, you guys, I don't have a personal preference. I actually truly love both of them. I have both of them in my stash. Um, it's just what I grab for at the time. I had a bunch of Dixie Belle or a bunch of Waverly left over from when I got a bunch of Dixie Belle and I didn't want to waste it, so I've just been using it up. So to answer your question, I love both. So once those were completely dry, then I go in with my mini chip brush and my ink Waverly chalk paint, and I dry brush the edges all the way around all four pieces. I also get a lot of questions on my mini chip brushes. Unfortunately, you guys and other creators sold them out um, about three years ago. I started using them on my channel. Everybody absolutely loved them, and now nobody can find them anywhere. So anyway, I did find a kind of comparable one. Uh, Beware that the bristles do shed, but I did find some on Amazon that I did link in the description box below um, where these label holders are also linked as well because I glued down the front of these little boxes after I dry brushed 
and then I screwed down the label holders in front of each box. Once I was done with the label holders, then I took this little house from Dollar Tree. Now, if you guys have been around, then you know I just did a project similar to this using this house. So if you guys want to see that, I can link that in the cards in the right hand corner. But for this project, I separated the two pieces because I didn't, I don't know if you guys know, but they do come apart, making it much easier to paint. And I spray painted the bottom with my black spray paint and the top with my hammered silver spray paint. Once that was dry, I brought it back into the craft room. I took my natural sponge from Walmart and my elephant Waverly chalk paint and I just dabbed the chalk paint all the way around the roof to dull down that silver. I then went in with that same natural sponge and my white Waverly chalk paint and I dabbed that around the entire roof as well. And this is going to give it a galvanized effect. Now for this particular project, because it's a haunted house and because it's spooky, I did go in with that same natural sponge and dab just a little bit of black all the way around the roof and set that aside. I then went into the or went on the bottom with a small paintbrush and I just used some white Waverly chalk paint to brush some of those details on the house. Once I was finally satisfied, I set that aside to dry as well. I go back to the roof and I take my Antique Wax by Waverly and a very small um, paintbrush and I just kind of dab that in certain places and then use my finger to blend that in the roof. And then I realized that I could use the natural sponge to blend that color in to make it look like rust, much like foundation and a beauty blender if you will once i was satisfied with the rust and i you guys i'm so ocd it takes me forever because i really want this kind of stuff to look realistic so you do it till your eyes are happy just like i do the same so once i was finished the roof like i said I attached the roof and the bottom piece of the house uh, back together and then I took a string of lights from Amazon once again linked in my Amazon shop in the description box below and I put those into the back of the house gluing the battery pack to the bottom now if I did this again I would have glued the battery pack closer to the back so just be aware of that and then I made sure that the lights stayed in really nicely I traced out a piece of foam board, cut that out, and I also traced and cut out another piece of that removable wallpaper and attached that to the foam board. I then painted the edges black and dry brushed all the way around the edges just to give it a cool little effect, and then I glued that into the back of the house. Now I knew that I needed to access my lights, so all I did was right behind the door so you couldn't see it, I just cut a small little slit in the back of the foam board so that I could slide my finger in there to turn on the battery pack on and off. And look how cool this house is, all lit up. Oh my goodness, you guys. Um, and so for the next step, I took an Amazon box and I just cut two of the flaps off. Now I knew I wanted to make a roof for this project. I just wasn't exactly sure how I was gonna do it. So I started off with the cardboard and I kind of measured, I laid it, <laughs> let me back up you guys, cause this is a little bit confusing. So I laid the cardboard down onto the top of the box with the little block that I got from Dollar Tree behind it. And I just kind of eyeballed like a roof flaring out and I sketched that onto the cardboard. I then cut that out to see what I was working with. I ended up making the flare a little bit bigger and I also ended up making the second one with the end of the flare longer so that it could fit 
all the way around the top of the block and then come down on an angle where the flare is, if that makes sense. So for the second one, obviously um, I did not make that one too long. So you learn the second go around. But for the first one, all I did was just cut another piece of cardboard and glue that to the back. So that way the, the top of the square is completely covered. Now for the sides, all I did was lay the block onto the piece of cardboard and I traced that out. And then I just kind of sketched where I thought that it would like lay down on top of if that makes sense i know this makes zero sense what i'm trying to explain but you can see what i'm doing here so i measured out the block and then i drew on an angle and cut that out once i had that perfect shape then i was able to make three more for the sides of our roof once i was done cutting them out then i glued all the pieces down and look how nicely this came together i was just super impressed with myself you guys because i don't know if it's the ketones or what but i've just ha been having such luck with my projects like putting them together much better and just doing them an easier way a lot of the times I do things the hard way and then I'm able to tell you guys the easy way but anyway long story short <laughs> I love the way the roof came out I paint came out I painted that with my ink Waverly chalk paint and set that aside next I pulled out my mini miter saw once again linked in my Amazon shop and I just cut a bunch of these little popsicle sticks up not being real, um, you know, particular on the sizing, I actually wanted these to be different sizes because, as you know, um, like a haunted house's roof is really messed up. So, do not get all technical like I did here. Um, I tried to like get the same sizes in a row, and then the second go around, I was like, Melissa, you are silly, girlfriend. Like a haunted house is messy. It's not all. OCD uniform like you are and like you have this here so anyway long story short you're gonna see on the second one that I did learn once again you learn the second time around um, but for the roof I just kind of layered these pieces so I started at the bottom with the ends of the popsicle sticks first and then I quickly realized that um for the second one, I did all different pieces. There was no rhyme or reason. I just kind of placed them where I thought would look really good and I did it till my heart was content. And as you guys always know, I suggest that you do the same. Yours does not have to look the same as mine if you want to try to recreate this project or any form of the project. Um, definitely don't be afraid to make it your own. So for the second one, because I did that at nighttime, <laughs> I'm in my craft room a lot, but sometimes I like to bring stuff like this inside at night when the kids go to bed. I can just pop on a show and this did take about a half an hour a piece once I had all the pieces cut. So anyway, um, once I looked at the second one, then I added pieces to the first one to make it look a little bit more uniform because the first one looked way too, way too perfect to be a match to the second one. So anyway, <laughs> once I was done my roof, it looked so good. I was getting so excited, you guys. All I did was take my paintbrush and just brush away all of the glue strings and then I very carefully painted both of the roof pieces with my ink Waverly chalk paint. Next I went in with my metallic sterling silver folk art acrylic paint. <laughs> Say that 10 times fast. Then I went in with my mini chip brush and the paint and I just dry brushed all the way around that roof on the side and I absolutely love the way this silver looks. It just gives it that spooky and like haunted vibe if you will. I don't know would you guys have used white or do you like the effect that this silver gives?
Next, I glue the roof pieces down on the left and right side with some hot glue. And then once I was done with the roof, I took the house and I also took the little wooden squares from Dollar Tree and I glued those to the bottom of the house, one on the right and the left side, two in the front and then two in the back, I believe actually one in the back. <laughs> and then I glued that down in between our boxes in the middle and then I wanted to make little stairs so all I did was take a small square dowel and I laid out two of those blocks from Dollar Tree measured out how big the pieces need to be to go in front of that and then cut out six pieces that size again not really worrying if it is exact because spooky steps are all messed up once again so once I had all of my pieces cut out then I lay it down on a piece of wax paper and I glue the pieces together now I glued the bottom pieces together nicely and then for the next two I kind of glued those on a slant the second one I glued on a slant and I glued it so it was kind of like pushed up a little bit and then for the top one I glued that down to the top as well and I realized that it was a little bit too tall to go in front of the house so I just used my miter shears to cut off the top of that. I then stained that with my Dixie Belle tobacco reed voodoo stain and while that stain was still wet, I took some ink Warily chalk paint and just dry brushed some of that paint all around the steps, once again giving it that spooky vibe. I then glued the steps to the front of the house with some hot glue and I knew that I wanted to make kind of like a graveyard, so I pulled out a bunch of different sizes of tongue depressors or craft sticks, popsicle sticks, whatever you like to call it. I call them popsicle sticks. So I cut those down again, different sizes, and then I measured on that same square dowel rod and I cut those pieces down for the bottom of the tombstones. To glue the tombstones to the square dowels, I took one of those small squares from Dollar Tree with my mutter, miter shears. I cut that into three and then I glued each little piece to the back of our popsicle sticks and then glued that down to the square dowel. That way you have a little bit more space to glue to. I then took them outside and spray painted them with my hammered silver Krylon Fusion spray paint. And once those were dry, then I used that same exact technique that we did for the house or for the rooftop, I should say, on the house um, using the natural sponge and the combination of the elephant and the white Waverly chalk paint to make these look like galvanized metal or stone. Um, I just thought, I just love this technique. I think it looks really cool for either or galvanized metal or stone. So once I was done that, then I went in with those chip brushes that I was telling you about and I dry brushed all the way around each tombstone and then I literally just decorated each one however I saw fit. I got these rub on transfers from Dollar Tree and just cut out a different random um, like images and then uh, transferred those on.
And this is where you get to be creative. If you don't like the way that I did my tombstones, you could freehand a saying. I hate my handwriting, especially for home decor and projects. So that's why you don't see me do that much. But if you like your handwriting, go for it. If you want to print images off and um, put those on yours, go for it. It's totally up to you. So once I was done my tombstones, I went in with that same chip brush and my um, stain once again to make them look rusty and then I glued those to the front of our house. Next I took some of this Spanish moss and I just put that all the way around the tombstones in front of the house that way you could not see the bottom of the crates. Now, I always get all the different types of mosses mixed up, so I know this is a different type of moss than the Spanish moss that I just used. Floral moss, floral moss, right? Yes, floral moss. Next, I took this floral moss and once again, randomly just put some hot glue on my roof of the little house and I put some of this floral moss all around the roof to make it look like all of this stuff was grown over and once again it just gives that super spooky Halloween vibe and once I was done with the small house then I went to the little roof pieces on either side and I also did the same exact thing. After I was done with the second rooftop on the right hand side then I went in with my Spanish moss once again and I just kind of pushed that down onto the side of the house and the back of the house that way you couldn't see any of that if anybody happened to look in the back I could also kind of see that the sides were a little bit empty from the front as well so I wanted to make sure that it was really covered and you couldn't see any of the wood underneath the house so I just kind of tucked that into the bottom of the house and then the next thing I wanted to do <laughs> See this project you guys I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know that it started out as a completely different shape then the top and all the little pieces in my head were completely different and as I went along I just kept adding and adding different things so um, for this part I just cut a bunch of little teeny popsicle sticks I cut them in half and then I also cut the tops like a fence in different sizes and I laid them down I also measured the space that I had beforehand and drew a line on my wax paper or my parchment paper so I knew how long I needed each fence piece and then once I had all of the pieces cut then I cut a popsicle stick in half cut the ends off and then glued that piece down to the other little pieces to connect them all together if that makes sense. Once that was finished then I painted it with my ink Waverly chalk paint and dry brushed it with that same silver acrylic paint. I also took these bats from Dollar Tree and dry brushed that same silver paint. Like look how cool those are compared to how they originally looked. I loved how it pulled all the details of the bat out. And then I just glued those fence pieces to the e on either side of the steps with some hot glue, making sure that the glue was dry before I like pulled my hand away because I didn't want it to fall and pull up the um, Spanish moss. It would have been a big mess. So just make sure your glue is dry before you go anywhere. <laughs> so to finish this project off now, I would love to make all of the decor pieces on the inside for you guys. I just did not have time in this video. So for Friday's video, if you guys want to see that, let me know down in the comments. I can definitely bring that to you. But to finish 
today's video and this project off for now. I take this um, sign that I got at Easter time at Dollar Tree and took the transfer that I wanted to use, measured that out, and then cut that sign down with my knife and gave it a distressed coat of my Ink Waverly chalk paint. I also took two small stir sticks and painted those as well. And then I figured out that I had this other transfer in my stash. Um, if you guys want this transfer, I can leave the link. I know this is definitely available in my shop, but I took the Welcome Foolish Mortals transfer after I had cut it out from the rest of the little haunted houses and the little decorations and sayings. Then I transferred on that saying going long ways instead of how the transfer is um, from top to bottom, making sure to dry in between transferring on each word. I also wanted to mention that I did use my white chalk paste to transfer this on. And then I thought it was perfect that I could still use the original saying that I was going to use at the bottom. It worked together perfectly. So I thought, welcome, foolish mortals, enter if you dare, was the perfect saying. And then that little space on the end, I transferred on some of that little skull haunted house. To finish this, uh, all I did was take my mini chip brush and that same silver acrylic paint that we've been using, dry brushed all the way around this sign as well as in the middle, and then I also dry brushed some silver onto our stir sticks. I glued my sign down to the top. I wanted it on an angle, so I glued that down to the top and then glued that to the top of our haunted house. I glued a bat to the sign and literally you guys, that was it. I absolutely love this project. I put my all into it. Did it take a little bit of time? Absolutely. But I promise you guys, anything worth anything takes time. Um, it takes your energy and everything. So I am so in love with this project. This probably is my favorite project I've ever done so far. I don't know. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Let me know what your favorite project that I've ever done is. Um, I'm curious to hear your opinion. Everything you guys do, the thumbs up, um, the subscribe, the shares, the comments, all that stuff really, really helps. And I just want you guys to know that none of this is possible without you. I appreciate every single one of you more than you could ever know. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.